Hey there, I'm James. I'm Mark. Hey, Mark. I'm Eric. Hey, Eric. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Allie. Nice to meet you. Hey there. Hi. Wow. Yeah. It's already cleaner than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you go back in the press room. It's really clean. Wow. So do you guys press the platinums and golds and stuff no, and stuff? No. no. Just spray paint or? Spray paint. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're actually real records. Like if, if you can put them on a turntable, there's nothing on it. It's just uh, made to look like one. Oh. Yeah. I guess it depends on who makes it. But... Hey, man. Hey. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. you. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. I'm Eric. Hey, how you doing? Nice Kirk. to meet you. Hey. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice Welcome. to see you. Hey. Hi. What's going on, man? Hey, I'm nice Kirk. How you doing? Good. Wow. Okay. okay. It's real. It lives. It's real. It's real. It's real. I'm in charge of manufacturing here, so I'm gonna walk you through the whole process, the plant. Anyway, so this is the beginning of the record pressing process. And it is a very elegant plastic compound. It has waxes, lubricants. A lot of those things get activated at certain temperature points. So it's a really, it's a really sort of sophisticated compound. Is it difficult to manufacture that, that PVC compound? It's extraordinarily difficult. So, so everything furnace is here. There's yep. it, we, it's yeah, all, everything's here. Okay, so both the corporate and the offices and the, the, the practicals and the assembly and everything is all takes place right here. It's all right here. Uh, how many people work in this building? So um, there's 65 of us. Right so now. we have a very diverse workforce and this, um, these flags, the country of origin of all the people here that were not born in these United States. The first paper component that we get in are the labels. We print all of the center labels at a, uh, a local print shop. So um, when they come in, we still consider them to be wet. So the ink has not fully dried, even though it appears that it has, it'll be dry to the touch, but inside the paper is holding humidity and, and moisture from the ink. So they go into these big industrial ovens for 12 hours. Once they begin to brown on the backside, they can go into a press. If they stay wet, they'll blow apart and ruin the stamper. So because there's so much heat and pressure when the press closes, the paper can't sustain and it opens up. These are Phoenix Alpha presses. They are made in Sweden and they are all less than five years old. When we started the plant, we started with the old 70s version of these machines, the Tulex Alpha which we got out of Mexico City and were barely functional. And so we rebuilt them. And the way that we began to get good at pressing records is that each morning we would start up the machines, they would be broken, we would fix them, make them live for one more day, they would die at the end of the day, and then we would start all over again. We are the only pressing plant in the world that has ever installed one of these machines with no help from the manufacturer. And we've done that 12 times because of our maintenance crew and how experienced they are. At Furnace, there's a saying, which is that we don't hire experts, we make them. So everyone here started with absolutely no knowledge. Every bit of knowledge and skill that we have is hard fought and well earned. This is Peter, this is Marcos, this is Sebastian. How's it going, buddy? Good. All right. These guys are on the maintenance crew. So they are the heart of this place. They keep the place running. So without them, we would rely on outside contractors to get this stuff done. And when a press went down, we would be waiting perhaps weeks. You, you don't hire them. experts, you make them. We make them. That's right. So I like that. We, like, these guys have learned to fix shit that nobody else has done. So there are times when the presses do something that Phoenix Alpha calls us and asks if we know how to fix it because these guys are so good at their jobs. So what's happening is that steam, high pressure steam, is shooting through two labyrinth dies that the stampers are attached to. Steam's coming in at 150 PSI to superheat the surface of the stamper so that the PVC will spread evenly across the surface of the record. If our heating and cooling isn't right, it can go like, look like this, like waves, or it can look like a dish, right? We don't want either of those things. Every record that leaves furnace is dead flat. That's our standard. So the material's getting hotter and hotter, it goes up. It's gonna be 200 degrees when it goes into this. This is where the puck is formed. So an auger feeds all the pellets, 
into the pucks. Into the yeah, into the yeah. So we call it cake former, puck former. So it's opening. Now it's gonna go in. But the puck is what we're hearing. Yeah, yeah. Where the music and this is for the label only. This is only the label part, yep. That's pretty cool. From pellets to your record in yep. one thing. Pretty cool. So if you're doing a bunch of different or you're for you doing one record right now, is it just one machine or you have multiple stampers doing? So it depends on how big the order is. Got it. Yeah. So if we're doing something that's really like, if we're doing something like 72 seasons, that's going to get put on multiple machines. Um, smaller runs, so you can, you can hold it. That's the stamper. That's going to be the catalog number, and sometimes the band will request that something funny gets written right. on there. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we always like look and see what was written in there. You can request so anything bands. you want. So many bands would write stuff in there right. back in the day. So we audio QC all day long, and I'll, I'll walk everyone back there. And we could, so we're taking records off the press multiple times an hour and doing needle drops on them to make sure that they're quiet. So do you have a recycler here? Do you, like if you, pr you press a thousand and they're all bad, what do you do with them? Well, we cry. <laughs> <laughs> that almost never happens. Um, I'll show you guys QC real quick. All right. Tom is in charge of audio QC. So his team is pulling records off the presses all day, checking for visual defects and sonic defects. Um, and I'll, I'll bring, I can bring a couple of people back here to see what that looks like. People will say, I want this job, this is the coolest job, they're listening to music all day long. No, it's the, hard, it's, it's the hardest job. Because they are not listening to music, they are listening for the absence of music. They're listening for surface defects, they're listening for places where um, we've got non-fill and stitching. They're making sure that we don't make a Taylor Swift record that has Riding the Lightning on the B side. They're, they are the air traffic controllers to the pilots that are the press operators. And then all day long we check that stuff. And you can see that behind us, so there's a clipboard for every one of these presses. We log defects and when we fix them so we can go back and find where an error has begun in the process. I'll show you what I consider to be the best part of the whole place, which is the boiler oh, room. Boiler Follow me. Yeah. Is that what you do for a living? You listen to records? Yes, sir. You get to listen to the new Pearl Jam? That's this one right here. So, come on, how is it? Excellent. Huh? Excellent. 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 Good. Good to hear. Well, cool. Yeah. Of all the jobs you can have, this doesn't suck, does it? This does not it's suck. The, the variety that you guys have here is just like seeing out there from like, you know, Nine Inch Nails to Eminem to Ace Freely to Cinderella right. to uh, Glenn Campbell we to Glenn Campbell right to the damn Yankees to um, Gary Garcia. Well, Nora Jones to I mean that's that covers a lot of musical territory. You know, there's something else we should mention. We're regularly listening at 45. So, because we want to get through the record fast and hear if there are defects and get our report out to the press operator and it, you know before they make a bunch of records with a problem. Okay. So. I can tell you, Metallica grooves fast. <laughs> 45, oh gee. Well, I'd like to issue an official apology. Uh, I'm sorry that you have to deal with that, but listening to Metallica at 33 must be challenging enough, but, but thank you. All right then. Hot water is coming back out, dumping into this tank, then mixing with 50 degree chilled water that's run all the way down the length of the plant to a chiller outside, and then it comes back. That chilled water loop then mixes with the warm water. We send it back into the press room to cool the, to cool the dyes at uh, 70 degrees, 150 PSI. So it's treated water, so there's no water, contaminants? Yeah. Okay. This, this water can never touch the boiler water because the things that use to treat it are two totally different chemicals. And if they mix, they cancel each other out and you get scaling in the boiler. So these two things right here are water softeners. So the boiler requires zero hardness in the in what we call the pressure vessel. So right. So no calcium, no any buildup in any machinery. None. Right. None. Nice. Um, 
And then uh, I'll show you recycling. So this machine knocks the centers out, as you saw, and then you get this. And this can be, this gets thrown into this plastic granulator, turns into chips, and it goes back into the press room. So we can run, we call it regrind. So we can sometimes run 100% regrind, which is great, but some presses don't like it. The, one of the weird things about record pressing is that each one of those machines has its own personality. And some of them won't run regrind. Some of them don't like to run what we call virgin material, which is the stuff right out of the bag. We can blend them too and, and extend the life of the material by blending them together. Gotcha. So what makes the, where's the pellet maker then? This is the granulator. That's so, a granulator. Yeah, okay. So if we were to. <laughs> yeah, they should have used one of those in Fargo. We can, yeah. All right, can I do one? Please. Oh, I want to do one too. There. <laughs> Just straight in. Yeah, right in. <laughs> Great. The wood chipper. Ah. All right. We don't produce any kind of, of waste that is vented to atmosphere. If we, the boiler uses natural gas, but we're not sending out, we're not, the only carbon footprint that we have is from the boiler. That's it. So, steam, being, it's, it's, yeah, so anything that we're, anything that's gassing out of the plant is steam, which is yeah. flashing back to water vapor yeah. immediately, so. In terms of the, the green element of it, is this about as green as it gets? I mean, yep. is this... Yeah, because I mean, anything that we can't recycle, we send off site and they'll make pipes and cable housing and you yeah. know, anything else, like it gets made into something. Yeah. All right, we're gonna make a splatter. You're gonna, you're gonna actually make one on the press. You ready? And there's nobody more qualified to do this here today than us? You got it. Okay. This is the closest that we get to true artistry. And this is, I think, one of the coolest things that we do. So this is where all the splatter, the half and half, all of that stuff gets done. So you can kind of see examples of some of the things that we can do. This is a totally manual process. It is all done by hand. So when we get an order, like when we started building this out, we spent days and days learning how to make these things. And there's things that we can do that nobody else can do, things that other plants can do that we teach ourselves how to do. So um, it's a 100% manual process. So Dale and Sophia are going to teach you guys how to make a Ride the Lightning Splatter record. All right. Yeah, cookies and cream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool. Shut it and hit it again. So pull it out. Yep. All right. So this is like baking or it's like baking Christmas cookies. It's appetizing, right? You'll just place it right in there. Place it right, right, right in there. Yeah. Okay. Put it right on the little hole. Oh, put the splatter. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. There. You want to sprinkle a little bit more on top. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so, and then press them? Yep. All right. So, baking at broiling, eight minutes at 350 degrees, kind of? Yeah. Well, you can actually see it melt. <laughs> there it went. Oh, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Record shit. pressing's not for the faint of heart, okay? Yeah. 
Okay, then I can All right. just take it out. Yep. Pick it up by the Very nice. I just wanna I wanna keep it like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You gotta trim it, James. I don't wanna trim it. Wow, look at that. Right behind and then on the trimmer. Pick it up there. Perfect. Okay. And then over to the trim tip. Okay. Yep. Fine. There you go. You got a bunch. Do I put press it down or no? Okay. I wanted to put my fingers in there to no, set no, no, it. No, no, Don't no. do that. Woo! Break them fingers. Okay. Congratulations. Thank, thank you very much. And then what? I uh, will put it in sleeve. That's yours, man. And this plays? Yeah. Guys, this is Dan behind you. Dan is from nice. Audio QC. And wow. he's going to check Kirk's record and make sure it doesn't suck. <laughs> OK, bro. Thank you. Give, give, give it a spin. Uh, uh, blue. Uh, blue. We'll give this away in a contest. Whoever wants it, who wants it? Do you want it? Do you want it? So these records behind you have been pressed and we consider the records to still be malleable for 24 hours after they've been pressed. So they can, they can cup up like this, it's called dishing, not desirable. They can also warp. So you'll see that, <laughs> that, not good. Not good. <laughs> So um, you'll see that there's these cooling plates between every 10th record, and then we've got a wing nut with a center on the top, and this, this puts pressure on the entire stack of records, keeps them flat for 24 hours. After 24 hours, they come here, and two things happen in this department. One is that we physically inspect every single record that we make. A second set of eyes is on it, looking for stitching, non-fill, making sure that the scribes, that the catalog numbers are correct on both sides and that it's flat. After an inspector passes the record, it will go into a sleeve and put on these carts behind you. So these records are waiting to go into the final stage of packaging, which is where they go into the jackets or the covers. This is where the sleeved records will go into the jacket, get the insert, download card, whatever it might need. The women that work in this department can put nine and a half records together a minute if they're really cooking, which is fucking flying. It's amazing. So um, some Twi down here and another lady, Yukao, have been here almost as long as I have. So they're phenomenal at what they do. 72 seasons happening right now. Right now. This is Twee. Twee. Hello. <laughs> Don't mean to disturb you. Twee. Look. Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> good She's a good worker. Everyone, this is Connor. Connor runs this department. Hello. Hello. Twee. Huh? Twee. Look. Look. It's a. <laughs> Hello. Who's that guy? Yes. <laughs> hey, Twee. Bullshit. <laughs> She's dedicated. And then the last phase of the operation is shrink wrapping. A lot of pressing plants consider packaging to be a loss leader. So we had to figure out how to monetize it. So. Um, we had to find ways to get really good at something that most people just kind of part of the process. So we're super fast at it. We're super diligent about it. And I like to think that we're really good at it, but we're always looking all the time. We're looking for ways to improve. So heats it up, shrink it just enough to not screw the record up. Yeah. Come on down the line. So guys, this is Sue. This is Dean. Hello, I'm James. And this, this is Michael. 
Hey, Michael. Hey, James. So, in the beginning, James, it was just me and Michael mm. running the whole manufacturing operation. Uh -huh. so he's, Very yeah. dedicated. Yeah. Very nice. Two different types of shrink wrappers. This one is automatic, meaning it, it just never stops. So, I mean, it'll stop, but it's just following the in-feed all the way down. There's an optic eye that sees, it's a brake beam eye, so it sees that there's a gap. The blade comes down, it seals. It's sealing over here on the side too. Ah, okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah. You've, got, you've got a seal up here and a seal there. And that's what it looks like. And then it's into the tunnel. Tunnel's about 250 degrees and it's only in there for a couple seconds. So then if there's a marketing sticker, that all gets automated down here and then into a catch basin, into a box, gets weighed through a carton sealer, gets a label and then on a pallet. Wow, quite the process. This is the warehouse over here. This is where all the print, um, corrugated inserts, all of that stuff is stored in here. You may see the name of these guys around in several places. Um, so we can store a thousand pallets in this location, another 500 pallets in the other facility, and then we also maintain an offsite facility where we keep stuff. So these are all pallets of jackets. You'll probably recognize a lot of these names. Yeah. There's a lot of them. John Mellencamp Beck, Matt Bellamy from Muse, uh, Nine Inch Nails. That's some good company. Beastie Boys. Oh, yeah? Bad Brains. Metallica. <laughs>